okay. Have you had a nice day? Can you just let me know if you can, I can see me for length, but can somebody just give me a thumbs up that you can actually see me here? Yes. And if I'm on the floor, can we see me? Can you hear me? Is that all okay here? It looks okay to me, but I'm not for sure. Let's just see who have we got. Hi, Ellen. Have you been out walking with the pooch today? It's been quite warm out, hasn't it? I went for a walk earlier. It's really stuffy. Um, I can see some little icons pop up, but sorry, I can't always recognise them. Oh, I think Grandad might be watching. Is that Sandy? Thanks, Alan. <laughs> right, Sarah, just seeing who people know what page we're from. Yes, hi, Sandy. Oh, I'm really looking forward to tonight, actually. It's something different, just a little bit different for the end of this week, week three. Hi, yes. Already, it's just caught up on bath from yesterday. <laughs> this will be a good uh, mobiliser then, and um, a stretch out from bar. We did ramp up the intensity, didn't we, yesterday in bar? Um, let me just check. I've still got a minute or so to go. Hi, Denny. Hi, Alison. Hi, Sue. I always intend to get on here at the 4 5. But it just never seems to be that much time. It just goes so quick. So different to teaching at the studio. Let's give it one more minute. I hope you all had a nice day anyway. Did we get chocolate? Hi, Norma. Hi, Helen. Hello Norma, how are you? Right, so I make it five o'clock. So we're gonna make a start. Now, if you're using a mat, that's fine. Hi Helen, <laughs> hi Penny. Um, and hello everyone else who's coming in. I'm probably not gonna see you now from back here. So if you're using a mat, um, you might not want it for the first part. I mean, you can start with it and you can get, you'll see what I mean. Um, part way through on this um, Tai Chi sequencing. So I'm just going to get rid of mine to start with, but it's going to hurt you. If you're on a carpet, you might want to keep it because you're going to be twisting through the foot line and you can just move it in a second. So let's start out with the feet turned out wide into that wide Luchi position. And then just ground through the mind of the big toe line into the little toes and think about drawing your heel bones in even though we're keeping them out into this position lengthen to find the strength through your inner thigh so you start to ground through that and um, the foot line strong through that root chakra to the central abdominal line and into the spinal line so from here just bring your shoulders over the ribs let the collarbone widen just melt down and keeping that chin level so we're going to take a breath in through the nose Palms face up, exhale through the nose, palms face down. So an inhale, and then your eye line can just follow the hand line. Let's do two more. Breathe in, elbows wide. Press the breath away as you exhale. Inhale, exhale. Now we're going to add a knee bend to that. So we're going to breathe in, and then exhale, press away. Let your arms and hands go over the leg line. Inhale, exhale. Now if your eyes gaze follows your fingertips, that naturally brings a sense of calm and peace into the body. So we're just going to go slow to begin, melt down, and just have a little check that your knee line is still in line with first and second, it's not turned in. Exhale. One more repetition here, take a breath in to a breath out. Now coming all the way to the top, straighten the legs and hold. Turn your palms up so they face the sky and you're going to take a baby back bend so you can straighten the arm line. If you want support then that's fine, do this with the hands in the lower back. 
then draw a circle around the body, find the breath, inhale, eye gaze the hands to sky, exhale, lengthen away and draw that circle, breathe in, breathe out, inward breath, now keep the inward breath going as you come back through your central line, exhale and release, so change the pattern of the breath, inhale to the top, exhale, now keep the exhale going and then inhale back up through centre. Don't forget, you're not just raising the arms, you're extending the back. You're going to do two more like that. So let me just go slide on. So as you come up, you're lengthening sternum to chest line. So you're moving from here, not just pulling your arms back over the head. Do your final repetition. So off you go. Inhale to the top. Exhale as you lengthen. And send your arms back round. Okay, from here, we're going to sink down. So take a breath in. Just hold, exhale, press the hands in front, inhale, sweep around, interlace your hands now, press away. Now keep the interlock through the hand line as you straighten the legs and then add in a back bend. Now when you come down, we're going to open the arm line, you're going to fold forward, so it's a curl actually, not a fold, sorry, cross the arms, so look, the arms are going to cross and then you're going to open back up to centre and then cross the arms either way. So I'm just doing this a little bit slower a minute so you can follow. And then open at the top. We're going to add an extension yet. So from here, it's a rounded back rather than a flat spine. And use your leg line, straighten the knees and then bend the knees. So we're just going to start to pick up that pace now. So from here, come with me. Take a breath in, bend in the knee line, inhale, press away, extension, and then exhale, let the arms go. Inhale, interlock, take hold of one wrist, press back, exhale, let it go. Inhale to the top, you've got hold of the other wrist now as you cross the arms, exhale, release. Take hold, cross over, and extension, Release, cross, last one, take hold of the other wrist, into extension, and let it go. Open up into a full circle now, palms up to the sky. Okay, same here, we're just going to change that um, leg line slightly. So you're now going to bring the arm line into a little ball. So you're going to bring your right hand on top and your left arm underneath here. So keep in that position, that's your little chi ball and then just change it around because your T-ball is going to change. So we're just going to sink and change. So you're changing that energy, allow it to be in that sphere, find that energetic ball and you just hold on to it. Send all your positivity into that little sphere. So it's a little bend through the knee line. You're not bouncing off the knee joint. And we're going to do one more and open. Now we're going to do like a window wipe action. So bring your right hand in front on the top, if you like, your left hand underneath. So you're going to sweep. So you're going to come predominantly into your left, uh, your right leg. So you sweep across, this leg can straighten. Then your left hand will be on top as you make that little chi ball. So we're going to go the same direction. Your right hand's on top, left hand's underneath, and then your left one comes back. So your right hand's on top, and then the left one makes that little ball. So breathe in, breathe out. One more on this side. Breathe in, breathe out. So let's change. So you're going to go the opposite way. So this time your left hand's on the top, your right hand's underneath. So you're predominantly going to your left. So sweep across and then it'll be your right hand that makes your little chi ball. It might feel strange this way or one way <laughs> compared to the other. So breathe in, breathe out. And just start to move through the leg line. So one leg straightens, one leg bends to centre and hold. And then release the arm line. Keep a bend in the knees. Keep turning the palms away. Bring your little finger to the outside of the thigh. And then see if you can ground the foot line, spread out the toes as you sink deeper. But we're keeping the length out through the spinal column. Radiate outwards that positive energy 
the palm of the hands, you've got diaphragm there, out through the middle of the elbow line, shoulders, the chest, then bring your palms to centre, sink the palms down, hold and then press and open. Okay, we should be getting slightly warmer. Just bring your feet back now and we're going to go into a hip width position. So from here, you're going to step back into a lunge with your um, right leg. So step back on your right leg. So your left leg is in front here, so it's baby lunge position. Then you're going to bring <clears throat> your right palm turned up to the sky, your left palm presses away. So we're just going to change the arms here. So your right leg is bent, your right palm is up to the sky, your left hand is facing forward, almost like a stop sign, left leg in front, and just change. So you're going to breathe in and then press the breath away. Now slow it down. Breathe in, breathe out. Inhale. Breathe in, breathe out. Now, can you sink a little lower on your inward breath? Inhale, hold there. Exhale. Three more. So you're finding stillness, you're finding calm. Okay, now hold here. Your back foot, you're going to pivot on it. So you're going to turn your heel to the back as you open wide. So your one foot is going to be, um, heel's going to be facing the back, and you keep your left foot facing me. So open your chest line now. Now pivot, pick up your back heel, back into your lunge, and press here. And then we're going to change that line, so you're going to open. Lengthen the sternum, the chest line. Breathe in. Now straighten to your open. Breathe out. Inhale, so it's one arm line, then you open the arm line. Last one on this side. Inhale, exhale, come in, and then step the back foot in now. Hover your back foot if you can off the floor, little balance challenge, or you can just keep it big to big and toe in contact. One more challenge, single leg balance, go down again, hold, breathe, and then place that foot down, coming up tall. So we're going to reverse that now. So you're going to have your opposite leg in front. So step forward on your opposite leg. So a little bend here. And then the palms change position. So opposite way round as we move. So from here, you're going to turn the opposite palm up and we change. So you press and slow the breath down. So you're going to inhale. In, breathe out and just let the hands come towards the waistline as you move on either side in terms of how far back they go now inhale sink a little lower press away with the breath so just keep this pattern how long can you make the spine how strong can you be through the leg line and now we're going to add on. So from here, open the line, lengthen, and then return back to centre. So breathe in, breathe out. So we'll just do it on single arms because we know where we're going from the opposite side. Breathe in, breathe out. Pivot on your back foot, send the energy forward. So remember, Tai Chi has no beginning and no end. So let the breath. Follow through as you go. One more, pick up the back foot. Open the line. Return to centre. Now step the back foot in, either big toe down or hover, and now single leg balance. Just watch where your knee's going, it's not going out to the side. Now come and focus a little more, sink a little deeper, and work through that line. And last time, and just release back up to centre. Okay, from here, we're going to do a little step behind. So take your right leg, we'll break this down. Just place your hands on the hips a minute. Little curtsy behind. 
and then from here, you're going to send your right palm up to the sky, your left hand through. So imagine just pressing through that window. And then you're going to open, just place hands to hips and change the direction. So you're going to lengthen up and over. So your left hand to the sky, your right hand is away. And then we open and we change. So just adding it with a little step. Now come a little bit lower into this position. Sink here, palms away. Now step from here, take the foot, challenge it, reach away. Go wide, challenge it now because you've got to step a little further into this. You can stay with a narrower stance if you prefer. Sink, step and press. Got one more to go. Breathe in and then press away. Try and square the pelvis. Come to centre and release. Okay, pivot. <clears throat> right foot. And we're going to come into a lunge. Lift up the left heel. So you're going to reach over and just let your arms go to the front leg. So you can bend the back leg if you prefer to so breathe in. Breathe out. It's straight in the back leg. Bend the back leg. So reach. Release. One more here. So the front leg will have to straighten slightly and then open as you step in. Step back on the opposite leg. So you're going to breathe and let it go. So you could keep the back knee relatively bent. You wouldn't even have to straighten it if you didn't want to. Or you can press and then release. Breathe in. Breathe out. Take your head and neck with you. Two more on this leg. Exhale. Inhale. And then open, step in, take a little shake out. So if you got rid of your mat, just bring your mat back in. So that's our little tiny knee section, which is excellent for our uh, warmth as well. Okay, so I'm going to go and um, slow down to teach this initially. So come to the front of your mat, everybody, so you've got space behind you. So let's start to take it through our yoga combined with Pilates. We're going to go feet together, ankles together, take a breath in, palms together, exhale, forward fold. If you need to support, hands would come to the thighs as opposed to the floor, but you are mostly thoroughly warm now, so it's just if you've got back niggles, go to the thighs. Bend the knees, we'll come up once more here, breathe in, back extension, palms together. Again, supported version is hands into the small of the back. Centre, take a breath in. Exhale now. How long can you make the crown of that head? Bring your index fingers either side of the little toes. Drop the head and neck. <clears throat> You're going to step back and do the same leg, the left leg. So keep your right foot where it is. Lower the right knee down. Sorry, <laughs> the left knee down. Foot flat. <laughs> Lengthen the arms. Bring your index fingers together. Press off the mound with a big toe on the front foot and add an extension. Option is here. Now, even if you've got your arms above the head, just be careful you're not going right into that lumbar spine. So remember what we've spoken about before, about the ribs wrapping around the spine. So you close the rib line down, they're not coming off your spinal column. Now let's make this movement orientated. Come back to centre. You're going to open your arm line, just going to move over slightly. So from here, reach forward, lengthen the spine, inhale, exhale as you open, draw that circle again. So breathe in, breathe out as you open. So imagine you've got that huge <laughs> chi ball now, breathe in and breathe out. Inhale, we open the hip, we open the chest line, we open through heart centre, lengthen. Okay, hands down, tuck your back foot. Now lift the back knee. You're gonna bring your back foot in probably half a stride, if that, because it's gonna stay there. Now you might need to move it out to the side slightly, out to your left, so you've got balance. Now we're gonna straighten the front leg as we go into pyramid pose. So it might be that your hands are on your thigh, it might be on the shin, or you can come either side of the foot. So just let the head and neck go, wherever you're going. 
to lengthen and relax through that upper spine. So get a deep stretch on the back of the thigh here. And we're gonna hold that position. So hopefully you're all feeling that right from underneath the crease, that fold of that bottom. Full hamstring stretch. Everyone get your weight into the arch of your front foot so you're not otherwise going to do this and the pelvis is rocking. Feet are facing forward. Okay, from here, we're going to add in reverse triangle. Now, it might be that you need to bend your front knee, that's fine. So this is your option, to bend the front knee. Everyone, you're keeping your left hand down and you're going to open your right arm. If you can, you keep the front leg straight. If it wasn't good with your hand flat, then go up onto the fist and we open. So reverse it here. Take that twist. Hold. So just modifying that reverse triangle. And then you're gonna bring the hand down. Okay, your front foot is now gonna step back. But before you do that, you might need to walk your back foot to where it was. So just move it away slightly. So you're on a completely straight leg. So you're stepping back into plank now. Option is to lower the knees so you could be in this position here or even on the forearms. Otherwise, they're going to stay in plank position. Now, leg pull front, going to take the right leg, breathe in, breathe out, switch, inhale, exhale. Open the hip line. So the back knee is straight. So, in terms of how high you lift the leg, you're only lifting it without doing this into your lower back. So again, you want the, roughly, the chest between the creases of the elbow. We've got two more on each side. Inhale, exhale. Okay, from here, lift up into downward facing dog. Walk your hands back. Pilates, roll up. Let the head and neck go, roll. One jump in turn. Bring the neck, bring the head up last. Okay, this time bring your arms out wide. Let me come and face you a minute. Turn your thumbs down. Now keep twisting the arm bow. Lengthen the little fingers to the sky. Feel the length and turn the other way. So little fingers come up to sky and then you turn. So two more, breathe in. Breathe out. So just wringing out those tissues. Remember, this will pick up the lats because the lats twist to insert underneath the armpit and release. Now, from where you are on your mats, go Pilates, roll down into walking out. So breathe in and breathe out. Two, three, four, five, six, seven, eight. Walk out long. Now you're going to be in your plank position to start. Okay, from here, you're going to take your body weight back. So it's almost like a plank to pipe position into downward facing dog. Now you might just need to walk your feet in a smidge here. So check your press into the four corners of the palms. Let your head go. And then we're going to bring the opposite leg through. So we're going to stretch the opposite side. So you're going to take a bend and lunge through. So the foot aims to get to your hands. If it doesn't get there, just pick it up and bring it there. And then you can lower the back knee down, connect into the back foot, and then we're gonna lift up. So your right foot is in front. This might be enough, or bring your index fingers together, and then add an extension of the spine. So I want you to feel a stretch up through the thighs into the hip flexor. So lengthen. Now, can you just square off the pelvis? And as you do that, notice where your front knee is. Loose the shoulders, lengthen. So you can challenge it. If you need support, support the body into that position. So only go where the abdominals are connected. If you do this and go too far, it'll be in that um, lower region and you'll hurt your back, which defeats the object of this. So press the back foot strong, the top of that back foot. That will ignite the line. And back to centre. Arms wide. 
Now you're gonna sweep forward, breathe in, breathe out, open your wingspan, inhale, glide, exhale. Now just check as you go forward, the knee isn't going with you, breathe in, you'll get a bit of a stretch on the back of the thigh there, as you go forward, breathe out to open, inhale, eye goes down, exhale. Feel the stretch through the body, one more. I'm doing it with movement, breathe out, and release it down, okay. From here, you're now gonna tuck the back of the toes. Start to straighten, and you'll feel that you probably need to step your foot in an inch or so. You might need to step out as well for balance. Now both feet are facing forward. You know, it might be that you need to come onto the shin, onto the thigh, hands to the hips, that's fine. So wherever you go, you don't have to remain in a flat back, but I just need you to feel it from the crease of the glute line. So you've got the whole hamstring engaged there, not just halfway down the leg. If you're only getting it halfway down the leg, you probably need to come a little bit higher and think length in order to access um, the work on the back line. So you press into the front foot, so it's a length to strength to get into those fascial lines. <clears throat> And everybody, just shift your weight forward a fraction, just feel the difference that makes. And obviously, if you needed the front knee to be slightly bent, you could. So, pyramid pose here. And then you can start to draw yourself down. If you want a little more stretch, that's fine, you can stay here. The most important thing here is the length on the back line. So, if you bring your nose or your um, head to the, the um, leg and you've lost the line, then you need to just come up slightly. Okay, bend the front knee now everyone. You might need to step your back foot in if you feel you do for balance, otherwise stay here, keep your right hand down and then you're going to open, so we're going to twist. So that is your full position. You might decide that you actually need to take the leg back to its original position with the foot and then the knee and modify here. That's fine too. So whatever's best on your body. And we'll just stay here today. We won't do the full advance reverse triangle. Feel the length. Now twist and take your rib cage away from the spine. You could be up here. So I don't want you to be slumped. Okay, so you need to find that full involvement through the body. So you've got a hamstring stretch into a twist. Just like we did our hip flexor stretch into extension and thigh stretch. And then release back down. Okay, from this position, you're now going to step your back leg forward. So bring that back leg forward instead. Stay here. Just let the head and neck go. Relax the body one moment. Now from this position, you're going to step back on your left leg first. Then step back on your right leg. Go into downward facing dog, lengthen. Now we come through to a mini sun salutation. So shift the weight forward. Lower the knees is the option. Feet down, I'll do the option first round. Now glide through like you're pushing that ball across the floor, nose, chin, chest, abdominals into cobra. If you need support, um, bring your forearms down instead. So here. And then release down. Tuck the toes. You can press back into child's pose first, that's your option. And then down the dog. And we're gonna come through again. Choose if you're going to stay on the toes, stay on the toes, breathe, scoop. Now you can stay in cobra if you want more, go full up dog. But make sure you're not down here into your back. So connect. So through the tops of the feet, you've got that energy. Open the ankle joint. Open the hips. Now lift and back into downward dog. Go child's pose first if you need to. Let the head and neck go. And then bring your weight forward. Just lower the knees down. So we're not going to do too much because it's Cindy C, the Cindy sequences. So not too much on the um, intensity today with the, those exercises. So from here, just bring your legs to the side. And then you're going to come down <clears throat> into a super position. And then from here, just making sure you've got that neutral spine. So you can bring your hands either side. So they're not going to completely touch underneath back line, 
we're going to go into the one leg stretch. So we float one leg off the floor, float the other, hands to the back of the thighs. Now rather than picking your head up first, press your thighs into your hands. So you then look at a long line as you come up. Bring your knees over your hips. Send your left leg away and the right leg comes in. So your right hand goes down the side, your left hand comes into the side, fingertips at the top. Point the line of the leg and you scoop. So you want to imagine you're picking up that feather. That isn't good. Just keep a leg on in contact with the floor or you can stay down here. So we're going to do another four on each leg. So power through the back of the thigh and the glute press. And then you can rest. Release down. Good, take that full body stretch. Just lengthen. Okay, now let's take that into from the one leg stretch. We're gonna go into the double straight leg stretch. Your option is to stay here. Look, and do, you can do a slide with your feet on the floor, a double leg slide, you can come back on the heels. Or you're gonna go bent leg, just straight leg if you're staying down. If you're coming up with me, so choose your setup. We'll go chest lift, breathe in. Just watch your nut tucked here. Breathe out. Straighten the legs and point. Now control. So you've got to pin this bone down, length between now and the sternum. Now only go as low as you can without anything getting pushed up here. So you've got to maintain the length in your tissues and then control as you come back. So open from the hip, even if you're in this position on the floor with your head down, and then as you come back, feel like your hamstrings are being pulled away from you. Resist the temptation to fly the legs. We go, exhale, control. So your upper body shouldn't have lowered down, it should be in your back. Two more, you might be here, and this is fine. Or you might be doing your leg slide on the floor. Control on the way back and release down. Well done, okay. Just lengthen out the body and you're gonna roll this time to take your stretch. So you're gonna come onto your side. So from here, come onto whichever side you've landed on. Rest your head and neck. You're gonna take your top leg. So take the foot into the hand. Now you might stay here or we're gonna roll. So you're gonna take it towards that dancer stretch. So as you roll, open the front of the hip. You can adjust the shoulders. If you want more, this leg goes straight and you need to come completely straight. So you take, if your back is released and your legs are flat to the floor as such, you can take hold. If it's the left leg that's bent, it's your right arm that's straight. Take the wrist and lengthen, or vice versa, depending on which leg you've done, and hold. Now press away, but at the same time, it's not in your lower back. I want you to lengthen, open through the front of the thigh. So you hit those four muscles and make up that quad. And just feel that length through the body. And release. Okay, now to come out of it, carefully roll out of that. So depending where you are, you can roll. Okay, now you can stay where you are and roll to the other side, but I'm just going to come up so I'm still facing the camera. So take hold of the opposite leg. So this is a great one to do on your 31. Now you can stay on your side if you've got a belt or a um, band or something you're holding onto here. Okay, so the underneath leg. Make sure you've come if you're on a mat right to the front so when you roll, yes, you're not just rolling off <laughs> somewhere. Now, the, it's hip extension to access the stretch in your quad, otherwise you're just only bending the knee um, and uh, jamming up the ligaments in the back of the knee doing. So send the foot up and away. This knee can be bent, so you might be here and the, the arm's down. If this knee isn't down to the floor, don't force it, it's just because the quad's tight, because your main muscle, that rectus femoris, crosses your hip and your knee doing. So we want to think about lengthening and encouraging that, don't force it down to the floor. Otherwise, you can just take this leg and bring it straight if you know that's good for your body. Pelvis is aligned. And then, if that feels right for your body, you just take away and lengthen. So it's right leg, left arm reaching away. Keep the length. 
relax the shoulders. And then you're actually in a stretch, a true stretch, so lengthening rather than stretching, thinking about um, it is a contraction of the muscle, so send the knee away, and as you send the knee away, you're almost melting the lower back into the mat, and then you want to counteract that again, so think about yawning open through the front of the hip, not so you do this, I don't want it to be in your lower back, you open the hip line, and as you open the hip, that transcends down towards the knee, <laughs> excuse me, and keeping that length. And then from here, just release the arm line. You can roll onto your side. You can go over, feels right for you. Just lengthen the legs now. Take a little shake out here. And you're gonna curl one leg in, curl the other leg in. Press your thighs into your hands as you come up. And let's come into that seated position. So we're gonna go into not as wide as you possibly can here, because I want to take it into um, the saw. So from here, lengthen. So we will do um, plateau seated spinal twist to begin. If this isn't good, just shorten your lever so you get full rotation. So the arm line is in the peripheral vision. It's not complete T, because that remember pushes the rib cage out of alignment. So we think you've got that length back through the crown of the head, and <laughs> excuse me, ribs over the hips. We're going to take the head, the neck, upper, mid, lower ribs. Now keep lengthening here. Where's this arm gone? It shouldn't have come across your body. And then derotate the spine and we go the other way. Now try and maintain height as you twist. This is the challenge. And come back to center. Let's do one more on each side. So you could be here breathing in as you um, wind up the tissues. So that will be now in more into your um, left side. Exhale, now don't just fling your head back, keep lengthening. And we go the other way, breathe in. Breathe out. Okay, open the arm line. So this time, as you twist, your little finger comes to the floor and you turn the back palm so the thumb goes up to the sky. Now when you come out of this, it's not just a sweep, you've actually got to restack almost and lengthen and then the arm comes in front, so it's rotation then it's flexion. This is the idea of the saw because it's that action. Now, this hand can be as close um, or even the other side if you kept the rotation of the torque through the body. I'm just going to go side on. So you're going to go back to your right side so you can see the back arm line. So we're going to turn, breathing in, your back arm, wind up the tissue there, so into the lats, a lengthen here, and then check your knot down, lift into little finger, and restack spine. And we twist, breathing in. So it's opposition here to here, and the added rotation. Lift and twist. Lengthen. So you've got hip flexion, rotation of the spine, and then you're twisting up into that lat line and turn. And we're going to do one more on each side. So go again, breathing in, breathe out. Breathe in. These tissues are going to move a little here, they will, just don't lift up off the sitting bones. And to centre and release. Good. Okay, just take a little shake out. So from here, come into your mermaid position because just we haven't done that much lateral flexion. Okay, so to finish with, before we do relaxation, bring your um, <clears throat> left knee out to the side, sorry, your right knee out to the side. Your left leg back. If this isn't good to sit like this, then you could stay sitting um, with the feet out into a wide V position as you were, or cross leg. So we're going to breathe in, lengthen, breathe out as you come back to centre, inhale as you go over. Now keep your top arm straight so you don't lose the lines, the connection, it's that fashion. So imagine you're drawing that rainbow, you arc the torso, Lengthen and press up and away here. Centre. Breathe in. Breathe out. Now, if you want more, it's perfectly fine to go down onto your forearm as long as you're not going to lift the or lift the sitting bones any more from where, where they're at. This side, though, you just hold onto the ankle or walk the arm line. 
and do one more on each side like that. So think about keeping the length through your spine as you move and you come back out of the waistline first and restart the opposite way. And return to centre. Let's switch legs or the leg line. <laughs> so from here, doesn't matter again, the sitting bones might not be completely flat to the floor, that's okay. What you don't want is the discrepancy to increase as you start to move your body. So centre yourself, so we've got an internal external rotation through the hips, we breathe in, the head and neck lead out, and it's upper, mid, lower ribs. So you're almost resisting here, imagine you've got a helium balloon on that top rib cage, and then press, drag this arm in, because then you're using the in, underneath side of your waist to bring you back, and head, neck, upper, mid, lower ribs, and then come out from here, restack it. So if you want to, go onto the forearm, that's fine, and open so you feel deep, stretch right up underneath the armpit line. So that's excellent for those lymph nodes that are there as well. So just keep that area freely movable. Let's do two more each side. Breathe in. Breathe out. Let the word breath move the body. You can cover and reach into the ankle on this side. And then you can return it to centre. Okay, just unhook, shake out. So you're going to come down onto your mat now. So for relaxation, just to finish. So if you want to grab that joint before you do that, make sure you do. And then <clears throat> close the eyes or find a soft gaze. Once you've adopted that position that's right for you, just allow the body to let go. Just to let go of any tension across the front of that forehead as you allow the eyebrows to part. And then as you allow the eyebrows to part, just feel Feel that the eyelids are light and that lightness radiates towards the temples. And that transfers into the jawline. And as you let go of the tension and the heaviness in the jawline, notice the impact that that has upon the neck. The neckline elongates, and as we elongate through the neck, the back of the head feels freer. You can energise out through the crown of the head, through that crown chakra. And then just feel that throat chakra relax on the front line. And allow the collarbone to expand on your outward breath. And as the collarbone expands, feel the chest line become free. And as the chest line becomes freer, as do the shoulders. So the tension dissipates down the back line of the ribs. And let the arm line be long, even if you want to walk the fingertips away from you now. And then turn your palms up to face the sky. So that reinforces the openness through the chest, through the heart centre. Through that heart chakra. And feeling the length through the tip fingertips. Mimicking that through the length in your spinal column. Allow the spine to glide downwards, like that waterfall flowing freely. And it flows deep into the small of the back, into that region that might, you might find aches or pains or stiffness and tightness. Just let the breath surround it. 
as long as it's that pool that's filling with that warmth. Let the lower back snuggle wherever it wants to go. And as the lower back is safe and secure, feel at the front of the body, there's organs surrounding the stomach, they become free. And that allows you to let go of any anxiousness, any worry, any stress. So you look after your back line and will have an impact upon the organs as well in that front line. And then from that root chakra, from the base there, allow the leg line at the front to be long. So the hips are open while we store that emotion. Glide out through the knees, out through your ankles, and out through your toes. And then just feel the back line reflect that front line of the lower limbs. Just allow the back of the thighs to relax. The space at the back of the knee that you create. The lower legs are free. The heels are light. And then feel the energy through the center of your foot on the underneath side. And again, we've got a diaphragm underneath that foot line. So then you want to connect the breath through the diaphragm and the foot, through the diaphragm as we know it, that dome-shaped muscle that wraps around, and the diaphragm into the hand line and into the roof of the mouth. So if you release through the head and neck region, the upper torso, the upper limbs, and into the lower limbs. You've released those four diaphragms and then that's a nice breath. Let those areas fill with oxygen in order to nourish the rest of your body. So we're going to take that breath in through the nose for four counts and out through the nose for four counts. And just let the breath flow. If it if it wants to be five, anywhere up to seven there, that's fine for today. We're not cue the breath as much in this relaxation. And then just taking that time for yourself. Just notice how the body feels as you've relaxed, released and let go physically, mentally. And emotionally. And then start to bring some movement into the fingertips, into the toes. We're just going to inhale, scrunch them, exhale, release them. So you use your inward breath and then your outward breath releases. And then we're going to bring one by one the knees to the chest. Take a little hug and roll from side to side. So just release the body, feel that rocking movement and just stay there and rock a minute because that rocking sensation creates vibrations through the body. So we've just created that calmness, that peacefulness, as we've gone into that parasympathetic nervous system, just to relax us. And then once you've finished that last little right to left rock, roll onto your side, and we're not gonna stay there, so you can just start to pick up the head and neck, press through the shoulder line, and lift yourself up so you come into that seated position. So find where you feel most grounded. So however you want to sit, whatever's best for your body. 
and then reground yourself. And then from here, we're going to take a breath in, palms together, exhale, release down the centre. And again, breathe in, breathe out, final time. And we are there. Well done, everybody. I hope you enjoyed that. I hope you feel a bit freer, feel more released, and maybe you wanted to feel calmer, de-stressed, whatever it was. I hope you achieved that anyway on this Sunday evening. Um, so tomorrow, what have we got? So tomorrow, uh, bank holiday, but the yoga at 9.45 is still going to run as normal. Then we've got the hula fit, which will run from this page. So this is open to anybody at 11. And then tomorrow evening, I'll be doing the normal um, in the private group again, the um, home to media advanced Pilates at 5.45. So I hope to see you at least in one of those classes, if not um, all of them, maybe for some of you. <laughs> so enjoy your Easter Sunday and let me know how that was. And I will see you all soon. Happy Easter. Thanks, Sandy. Hi, Annie. Do you like that? Hi Val, hi Rebecca, Ev. There's quite a few people. Did we actually participate in this today? <laughs> yes, hi Carrie. Hi Deb, I missed you earlier. Oh, you made it, Emma, that's cool. What else have we got? Hazel, Sharon. Hey Alison, who had a good day? Oh, hi Wendy. Oh, thanks Alan. Oh, thank you. That's great, Wendy. I'm glad you enjoyed it. Oh, thank you, Louise. I hope you enjoyed your birthday yesterday. Oh, thanks, Alison. Yes, I hope everyone is okay. Right, I will see you all tomorrow, hopefully. Have a good evening.